everyone, Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel and the last video in this little series of five. This one is my top five papers that I use for fountain pens, but I have cheated a little bit because the first example is a non-fountain pen friendly paper. I am doing all of these tests with Robert Oster, the Great Owl, and two of my dip pens. Uh, the first one is the Moon Man M6. It says it's a glass nib, it's actually resin. I actually really don't like this, it's scratchy. Um, it feathers a lot of my stalogy. I'm not sure if I can sand it to make it better, but yeah, I'm not having a lot of fun with that one at the moment. And the other one I'm in love with, which is my Pilot Iruotsushi in a fine nib. First example is printer paper. Run of the mill, you know, bought a ream from Officeworks. This paper is not fountain pen friendly. And what that means is it, it it can't cope with the ink so what will happen especially with the moon man is that it'll feather and you'll get tons and tons of bleeding it does take the fine nib better but you'll see as it dries and at the very end of this video I, I go through all the paper once it's dried completely the bleeding is crazy it feathers a lot it's just not really made for fountain pens it's not going to damage from what I know it's not going to damage your pens but it, it's not going to look great and I don't think you're going to get all the characteristics of the ink on paper like this either. So that is, I guess, a paper maybe to stay away from, but I thought it would be good to include as an example. Turning around, you can see tons of bleed through there. The next paper I am using is my Oxford Notebook in Optic Paper. In Australia, you can get these from Officeworks for like six, seven dollars. It's incredible. So I kind of classify this as I'm using inverted commas, cheap fountain pen friendly paper. It's amazing. It's a coated paper. Um, they're not the most aesthetically pleasing notebooks, but the the ink just glides on the page. I've never gotten bleed through. You hardly get any ghosting. I don't get feathering. The paper takes the ink really, really well and it looks good too. So for me, this notebook I use for like lettering practice or if I'm wanting to try some things out, uh, it doesn't matter for me if I stuff up and you know, don't, don't finish a page because it's not like Tomoe River where it's costing a whole lot of money. And you get bang for your buck. It's a chunky notebook. This is the A5. There's also an A4. I think there's a wider range of these types of notebooks in England, but in Australia, it's the Oxford with optic paper uh, that are really, really fountain pen friendly. Turning around, you can see there's not even any ghosting. The little things in the corner, uh, you can actually sign up to this app called Scribsy and it you can take a photo of your page and it comes up as notes as well just as a little thing if you you know wanted access to them in a work setting number three on the list this is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM blank paper I uh, this doesn't feel as coated as uh, the optic but it definitely isn't as thin as uh, like a Tomoe River Claire Fontaine is a, a very famous fountain pen friendly paper and for good reason. It writes, pens write really nicely on it. It takes the ink really well. Um, I found one stub nib I had that maybe isn't the wettest nib struggled on this paper a little bit, but that's me getting quite finicky for, for everyday writing. And I've done some swatches on this paper as well. It's great. The people that make Claire Fontaine also make Rhodia paper, which is another pretty well-known fountain pen friendly paper. Bringing it up close, no feathering, the ink looks great. And I'll turn over now and you'll be able to see there is some ghosting, uh, but not much. Where I did the swatch just down the bottom, it, it's not so much bleed through, but it's like warped the page a little bit, but pretty good. Number two on my list, and this is definitely biased because these are the notebooks that I use. Some would argue it's actually not the most fountain pen friendly, but is Stalogy paper. It's really, really thin paper. It's got a great sound to it. It does get a lot of ghosting, this paper, but I love it as a writing experience. I love the way the pen feels across the page. It's just the right amount of feedback for me, not too much. Um, 
for example, the moon man on this paper for me always bleeds through and always feathers, except in this sample that I do right now is the least amount of feathering I've ever gotten using this pen on Stalogy paper, you know, of course, but it's not a paper that can handle mass, mass amounts of ink, but I do most of my journaling in extra fine and fine nibs at the moment. I also have a medium nib that I use and it goes fine. I haven't yet used a broad. Um, you know what? I'm saying this out loud now. I've used stub nibs in this paper as well. I don't mind the ghosting. I hardly ever get bleed through. I think it is a great fountain pen paper and the notebooks themselves are fantastic. Bringing it up close now, I also think the ink just looks really good. Um, I like that you know, there's a grid there, but it's faint. The dot grid's faint as well. So the Moon Man N6 at the top, lots of bleed through, but that fine nib pilot, you're not seeing anything. Number one, really shouldn't shouldn't need any introduction. It's it's kind of the holy grail of fountain pen paper, and that is Tomoe River paper. It's another Japanese paper. The one that I'm putting down now is the 62 GSM. It is so thin and uh, sorry it's 68 gsm not 62 the paper just feels incredible in your hand let alone like before you even write on it just holding the paper is amazing and then you put the pen to it it glides across the page the inks just look incredible on it it's just it it has its reputation for a reason. It's, it's pretty expensive, this paper as well, but for good reason. It's incredibly well made. It takes fountain pen nibs and fountain pen inks really nicely. It's just a really great experience. And then you'll see when I turn the page over, it's just incredible. It's so, so thin. And then there's just like hardly anything, if not nothing there. Look, it's incredible. Even the Moon Man, maybe a little bit, but that's pretty, pretty impressive. So now all of these papers have dried completely. This is the printer paper, lots of feathering there. Ink doesn't look great and tons of bleed through also. So not your ideal. Next up is the Oxford Notebook Optic paper. I am going to sing this sing this notebook's praises again and again. Does the ink look better on other paper? Yeah, sometimes, but for note taking for, you know, mass amounts, I think it's great. Little bit of ghosting in that moon man up the top there, but that fine nib you can't see at all. I think it is a really great cost effective and affordable option. Next up after that is the Clairefontaine 90 GSM. This is the blank white. It looks really great. No feathering. The ink looks good. Bit of ghosting and that swatch has just kind of warped the page a little bit but not bled through. Um, so another really, really great option. In second place, it's the journals that I use, the Stalogy notebooks. Um, you can see that the Moon Man feathers quite a bit. It bleeds like crazy when I turn it over. The Pilot Fine Nib, however, uh, handles the paper really well. So I do think that this is a really good option. But, of course, in number one is the Tomoe River paper. No feathering, no bleed through, little bit of ghosting when I turn it around. But most importantly, the ink just looks fabulous. So that's it, guys. There are my top five fountain pen friendly papers. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you could hit like and subscribe, that would be amazing. And I hope everyone has a wonderful new year and I'll see you in 2023. Bye.